Conservative spinning media lies about themselves. I'm Brian Lilly with Rebel.media. I was able to attend the second debate in the Conservative leadership race. It wasn't an official one organized by the party. Instead, it was organized by Ottawa area MP Pierre Polyev, and it brought out nine of the 12 candidates. Daniel Lindsay, Stephen Blaney, and Kelly Leach weren't there. Leach actually was there earlier for the luncheon and the meet and greet, but reportedly left to deal with a break-in at her home in southern Ontario. The rest of the candidates spent 90 minutes to two hours, roughly, giving mini-speeches, answering questions from audience members, and even occasionally taking each other on, but just a little bit. One thing happened, though, several times, with several, if not all, of the candidates that's really bothering me. It was Conservative MPs accepting liberal media myths about their own party, their own election record, and then repeating them. First off, Michael Chong claiming that Conservatives need to be able to win in cities. We need to build a much bigger Conservative Party. A party that can win in cities, that can win in Atlantic Canada, that can re-earn the trust of new Canadians. A party that includes people from all regions and all races, religions and creeds. Okay, let's start with the issue of winning in cities. Let's face it, the last election Conservatives were beaten, but Chong's comments make it sound like Conservatives always have trouble in cities. And that's simply not true. The truth is they've had trouble in one city, Montreal. They haven't been able to crack Montreal. Other than that, where's the problem? In 2011, the Conservatives held several Toronto seats, actual seats inside Toronto, like Etobicoke Centre and Etobicoke Lakeshore. They picked up lots of seats in the surrounding suburban areas, like Richmond Hill. They dominated in Mich Mississauga, which, by the way, is Canada's sixth largest city. They also dominated in nearby Brampton, our ninth largest city. All through the 2000s, the Conservatives dominated Calgary, winning every seat in Canada's uh, third largest city. They were the dominant force in Ottawa, the fourth largest city, and Edmonton, the fifth. It rewarded them with all but one seat. Vancouver proper, our fifth largest city, was generous to the Conservatives, and they dominated the Vancouver suburbs. They also won in Quebec City, in Winnipeg, in Hamilton, in Regina, in Saskatoon. The idea that Can Conservatives can't win in Canada City is a myth perpetuated by Toronto media that don't venture west of the annex. As for Atlantic Canada, while the Liberals swept it this time, the Conservatives took most of New Brunswick in 2011, a seat in PEI and several in Nova Scotia. So, Michael, your party got beat last time, but don't buy into the myths. I'm not just picking on Michael Chong here. Lisa Raitt actually stood up and said, the Conservatives have trouble attracting women like her to vote for them. Women who are mothers. Really? Because decades of polling shows that one of the best indicators of women voting Conservative is whether they have families. Conservative parties here in Canada or around the world have trouble attracting young single women in the same numbers as left-wing parties do. But when women start to have families, they gravitate to the Conservative side of the ledger. Don't believe the hype, Lisa. And don't change your party for who you, you know, just because you won, lost one election after a decade in power. That's something that Andrew Scheer touched on a little bit, but then in my view, went off the rails. Fundamentally, we need to learn two important lessons from the last election. The first, is that we don't need to change our policies. We don't need to become liberal light. We don't need to offer policies to, cons to Canadians that we know won't work. We need to stay true to our real conservative values and principles. But we do have to think about how we can reach a broader audience, articulate a positive message uh, to Canadians. It wasn't our policies, it was the way we spoke about them. I didn't get any doors slammed in my face because people were upset at the balanced budget or fists shaking at me because they didn't like the tax-free savings account. But there was something protect, uh, preventing Canadians, a broader audience of Canadians, from vo voting for us. I know I can keep our conservative movement united on the things that we can agree on and reach more voters, younger voters, all those people that weren't looking at us in the last election because of our inability to positively articulate our values. Okay, here's the third myth. The Conservatives were too grumpy, that's why they lost. The Conservatives did not lose the last election because uh, they lost a bunch of votes to the happy-go-lucky Liberals. No, they lost the last election because the Liberals attracted millions of new voters to the polls. People that had sat out previous contests that saw Martin, Dion, Ignatiev take the Liberals to new lows. People that hadn't voted before. The Liberals actually went from 2.7 million votes in 2011 to 6.9 million in 2015 while the Conservatives went from 5.8 million votes in 2011 to 5.6.
In fact, the 2015 conservative vote tally was higher than their election winning records of 5.2 million votes in 2008 and 5.3 million in 2006. After 10 years in office, change was coming in. Just like Donald Trump in the United States, when voters want change, they're going to find a vehicle for it. And last year, that vehicle was Justin Trudeau. I agree with the idea of promoting conservative policies and values with a smile. But don't give in to the media stereotype that only angry white men are conservatives. It's simply not true. In the last election, you could have a smiling barbershop quartet singing behind every announcement, and it wouldn't have mattered. Here's the most important thing for any politician of any stripe trying to win the confidence of voters to learn. And it's a lesson taught just last week by Donald J. Trump. Be yourself. There's lots of people who will argue that Trump wasn't a real conservative. He's not a real Republican. Is he a closet Democrat? Some would even argue he's not sane. He's crazy. None of that matters. He was himself. He was as honest with voters as any politician can be. They saw his warts and all displayed night after night, and they elected him anyway because he identified problems that voters cared about, and he promised them solutions that they understood and that they liked. Like I said, that's something all politicians could learn from, but especially those currently seeking the Conservative Party leadership. Hey, if you like what you just saw, make sure you never miss a Rebel video again. You can click, click subscribe just down here or head on over to the rebel.media and become a member. Join the club with all the cool kids, thousands of great Canadians, and help keep producing really great Canadian content.